Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel, on our website, or our social media. It's in the description below, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a recent arrival to the pre-owned market because this is a 2020 model year timepiece from Grand Seiko. From the Elegance Collection, this is the SBGW262. Thin, manual wind, and extraordinary 39 millimeters in yellow gold, hand finished inside and out with a compound Urushi and Maki E dial. Take the timepiece at face value, and you can see it's no date pulchritude. Includes beautiful proportions 39 millimeters in diameter. It is 12 millimeters thick. It is a very compact and delightfully composed 44 millimeters from lug to lug with a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Throw the watch on the wrist, it is graceful, it is elegant. It continues the 2019 thin dress line with relatively slender manual wind thickness on the wrist. You can see the cuff shot. Not only is it thin, but it's nicely sloped on its side so a cuff can ramp over it. From overhead, you can see I have plenty of clearance on both sides of my wrist and down the barrel, plenty of clearance on each side. I would recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters in circumference. Now taking a look at the strap, it is a new strap, or at least fairly new and recent, but it feels so buttery. This is one of the great alchemical achievements of Grand Seiko. Somehow their relatively new straps, or brand new straps, feel as buttery and soft and broken in as a strap that's been worn for years. And you can see the quality is unquestioned. The large rectangular scale alligator leather gloss, black, monotone stitch, folded edge, and then on the underside there is calf skin, and you can see it is new. I don't know how they make these things so soft and supple. The buckle is simple, but as you can see, nicely made and handsomely detailed with a little bit of a beveling on the flight, polish as well as contrasting satin, and then rolling to the case itself. You can see a combination, simple, though it may be, of satin finish on the sheer flank and then rounded compound curved lugs that have a little bit of tumble home. They round off from center to the side and then obviously they taper gracefully from end to end. There is Zeratsu tin plate polishing on the polished surfaces. This is a Zalitz machine polishing technique that originated in Europe, but today the foremost practitioners are in Japan at Grand Seiko. It is effectively a black or mirror polishing that takes about three years to learn and it creates an optically flawless polish polish that is artisanal in nature, thus this case is hand finished. The crystal is a sapphire, but you'll note the calculated loft to it. It is immensely cambered, designed to evoke a vintage plexiglass, and also create a little bit of the off-axis distortion of a vintage plexiglass. The dial is bottomless, glossy, gleaming. It looks as though you could stick your finger straight into it as the it were a can of wet paint. Now that gloss is created using a traditional Japanese lacquering techniques and of course a tree sap or at least the basis of the lacquer is tree sap, but it doesn't stop there. It actually continues in this application with iron, and iron in its non-oxidized form is used to add darkness and weight to the dial. So the gloss comes from the tree product, but the darkness comes from the iron. Now you'll also note that the indices and the numerals on this dial have definite depth to them. They're built up from effectively a paint Paste. This is called Mackie E, and essentially this powdered paint is used to create three-dimensional silvered indices and golden numerals, as well as the Grand Seiko logo, that are built up so they have height and volume above the dial base, giving the dial an unexpected third dimension. Now, if you look at the center, you can see the hands, Dauphine for the hours and minutes, and then the Lancet style counterweighted second, which, by the way, is rolled and bent. Those are all hand-finished using diamond tip milling tools, and you can see in particular the details of the hands at center, which are satinated on their top, then beautifully faceted with mirror polishing on their edges. All of that is done manually. Roll the watch over, and you can see a derivative of last year's 9S63. This one is simplified with the no-date dial. It has the same basic specifications as this watch, which is 30 meters water resistant, features a 72-hour power reserve. It beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It does feature hacking or stop seconds. Pivots on 24 joules is made entirely in-house by Grand Seiko, down to the pivot joules, the springs, and the lubricants. And then it's adjusted in six positions, not the chronometer standard of five, 
five. This watch goes one better. An outstanding piece of hand-regulated horology. It is not as artisanally finished as the case and the dial. However, it is watchmaker built, watchmaker tuned, and when the time comes, watchmaker serviced for life. This is a handmade watch, dial side, case side, beautifully executed, simple, and a concise statement of Grand Seiko's aesthetic values in the dress watch realm. Email team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.